Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California invites you to Let George Do It. In just a moment, we'll begin tonight's adventure of George Valentine. Before you buy another gallon of gasoline, consider these facts. Gasolines can be made to stress one feature at the expense of others, but Chevron Supreme gives you the correct balance of all eight high-performance qualities. Starting, warm-up, acceleration, mileage, anti-knock, vapor lock prevention, power, and area blending. Try a tank full in your car. Ask for Chevron Supreme gasoline at standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean... We take better care of your car. The Common Denominator, another adventure of George Valentine. Dear Mr. Valentine, I don't know exactly why I should spend money to save the life of someone I don't know, possibly of several people I don't know. I imagine it's because I'd like a little peace of mind. Call it conscience or whatever you wish. At any rate, I need your help. I believe that together we may be able to prevent another murder. If the idea appeals to you, please call on me at the above address some evening this week. Come after nine o'clock when I can be sure we'll be alone. I suggest you make it as soon as possible before the next tragedy. Signed, Laura Trask. Now, Mrs. Trash, suppose you tell us whose life is in danger and what you want us to do about it. I don't know, Mr. Valentine. I haven't the slightest idea who it will be. Yet? Yet, Mrs. Trask? What do you mean by that? Just what I say, Miss Brooks. There may be no one at all, but after what's already happened, I can't take that chance. Uh Uh-huh. And what is it that's already happened? Mr. Valentine, I have predicted two murders. I've known about them before they happened. You... you have... And you didn't do anything to stop them? Call the police? The police? No. No, you see, the first time I didn't quite believe it would happen myself. Well, now, just a minute, Mrs. Trask. Do you mind telling me how you found out about these murders? It may be hard for you to believe, Mr. Valentine. In both cases, I've had a sudden premonition. A very strong premonition that these people would be killed. And when. And where. Uh Uh-huh. And they were both people you knew? I'd never heard of either of them. Both times a name came to me very clearly. A name and a time and a place. It was insistent. I couldn't get it out of my mind. So what did you do? I remembered there was a crime reporter on the clarion, a man named uh, Henry Ellis. Oh, sure. Hank Ellis, friend of mine. You told him about your impression? Yes, I didn't give him my name, of course. The first time I told him that a man named Arthur Prindle would be shot, killed in front of his rooming house on Elm Street that night. Mm -hmm. What did Hank do? Probably what you'd have done. Laughed at me and hung up. The next morning it was in the paper. It had happened just as I told him. But what, uh, how do you think this vision came to you, Mrs. Trask? I have no idea. The name and place simply came to me very vividly. I see. And there was a second murder, you say? Several weeks later, yes, a man named Walter Ransom. Oh, yes, I read about that one. Successful businessman, shot and killed in his own study. I knew about it an hour before. Again, I called your reporter friend... When he got there with the police, it had already happened. If it happens to me again, I... I want to call you. Yeah. Yeah, all right, Mrs. Trask, you do that. But first, tell me, have you said anything about this to anyone else uh, outside of Hank Ellis, that is? Yes, I've told my husband. I'm afraid he thinks I have hallucinations. Dream up things after they've happened. He isn't here now. No, my husband is busy until very late every night. He owns a club. Oh, uh... Would he be Tommy Trask, Club 52? That's right. Mm, swanky place, complete with gambling casino. 
It's one of the better clubs in town, Mr. Valentine. Uh, yes, I know. You've told anyone else? Only one other person, Dr. Schroeder, Dr. Klaus Schroeder, my psychiatrist. Oh? Well, you don't seem like the sort of person who would need a psychiatrist, Mrs. Trask. <laughs> So some time ago, I had a little um, mental upset, Miss Brooks. Nothing serious. Uh, Dr. Schroeder has helped me a great deal in orienting myself. Well, what does he say about these visitations of yours? He can't understand it any more than I. He's trying to isolate my thoughts, learn more about them. It's all a little frightening, isn't it, Mrs. Trask? A little, yes. But it wouldn't be so much so if I could stop the next one. I feel responsible. Perhaps we can stop it. Just remember one thing. If you get another of these premonitions, call me right away. I'll take it from there. Okay, Brooksy, that takes care of that. Oh, George, did you get Hank Ellis on the phone? Yeah. Did Mrs. Trask actually call him both times before the murder took place? Sure. First time, Hank thought she was balmy and hung up on her. Second time, he got there too late, just as she said. Well, then that proves she didn't just dream all those things after she'd read about them, doesn't it? Naturally. Also proves that she's either psychic... Which you don't believe, I'm sure. Or that she'd had advanced information from some source or other. Maybe she didn't tell us everything she knows, darling. Uh, maybe not. Which would just make it tougher. Uh, Mr. Valentine? Mm, what? Oh, yeah. I'm Tommy Trask. I understand you want to see me. Yeah, that's right. Oh, uh, this is Miss Brooks. How do you do, Miss Brooks? Why don't you sit down for a minute? Certainly. What can I do for you? I don't know exactly. Perhaps nothing. I uh, just came in to lay a few cards on the table. You came in... (laughs) Oh, yes, I understand what you mean. Well, perhaps I can accommodate you. Oh, just a second, Trask. Let's get straightened out. I don't mean the cards in the back room. Oh, And what do you mean? It's about Mrs. Trask. She's engaged me to try and help her. I see. About the things she's imagined? Well, I I don't think a couple of corpses come under the heading of imagination, Mr. Trask, do you? Naturally not. The fact remains, Mrs. Trask knew about both of those killings before they happened. Yes. So she tells me. Would you mind giving us your opinion of the whole thing? Not at all. Either she came across some information somewhere... Well, she murdered them herself, but she's a witch. I'm afraid the days of Salem are over, Mr. Trask, so let's drop the witchcraft, and I don't believe you think your wife is a murderer. Only trying to be funny. Of course I don't. That leaves only one thing, that she came across some information. Perhaps that's it. Uh Uh-huh. Did you know either of those men who were killed? I did not. One of them was a bum killed in front of his boarding house. The other was a businessman of some means. And if you're trying to insinuate that I but had... you talk in your sleep, Mr. Trask? No, of course not. I just wanted to get your angle before we try to help prevent another murder, that's all. There won't be another murder, Mr. Valentine. At least none that my wife will know about beforehand. What makes you so sure of that, Mr. Trask? Because I believe my wife will be cured of this strange thing that's been happening to her. I'm sure Dr. Schroeder, her psychiatrist, will straighten the whole thing out. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose a good psychiatrist can. Well, thanks for your time, Mr. Trask. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to call on this, Dr. Shorter. And then we'll just sit tight and see what happens. Uh, Mr. Valentine, Miss Brooks, yes. Now, what may I do for you? Well, Dr. Schroeder, you have a patient by the name of Trask, Mrs. Tommy Trask. Oh, well, I believe you must know the ethics of the profession, Mr. Valentine. Whether I have or have not a patient of any particular name is not the business of an outsider. Oh, yeah, that's quite right, Doctor. I understand, except, you see, Mrs. Trask is my client, too. Ah, you are also a doctor. Mr. Valentine is trying to help Mrs. Trask in another way, Dr. Schroeder, but it has a connection with what you're doing for her. So? Well, I I am afraid I still don't understand why you come to me. Doctor, we know about the premonitions, the visions Mrs. Ah. Trask has had. We know you're trying to do something about them. Is that clear? Oh, clear, yes, I suppose. But if you are not a member of the profession, why did she uh, engage you? So that another incident of the same kind could be stopped before it happens, that's all. Now, are you willing to cooperate with me? Well, but of course, Mr. Uh, Valentine. uh, Valentine, yes, I'm sorry. What can I do for you? You can tell me this, Doctor. Do you think Mrs. Trask has some sort of occult power that makes her predict murders? Ah, Mr. Valentine, I must confess, 
I am completely at a loss. I have studied Berlin, Paris, Vienna. I feel I understand my work, but this case has me completely baffled. You mean you think it's possible to have supernatural powers? All my training tells me it's impossible. But in this case, I'm frank with you, I do not know. Dr. Schroeder, when you're giving Mrs. Trask your uh, treatments or whatever you call them, hasn't she ever dropped some little clues to how she knows these things? Well, only some vague remarks about her husband, something that she seems... Oh, I'm forgetting. What the lady tells me is for me to know and use to better her mental health. Yeah, yeah, I understand, Doctor. Well, thanks. Oh, by the way, uh, when do you think she'll have another premonition of murder? <laughs> oh, who knows? Perhaps at this moment, perhaps next month, perhaps never. How can I say? Yeah, you're right. How can anybody say? Well, good luck, Doctor. And let's hope that between us we can find the answer to Mrs. Trask's problem. Valentine? That's right. This is Mrs. Trask. I called your office and there wasn't any answer, so I tried your home. Yeah, well, it's a little late for office hours. Mr. Valentine, it's happened again just a few minutes ago. All right, let's have it. His name is Glenn Diggers. He runs a carnival on West Crenna Street. You know him? Well, of course I don't know him. It, it came to me. All right, all right, go ahead. What else came to you? He sleeps in a tent on the carnival grounds, Mr. Valentine. At midnight, someone will be there to murder him. That's all you have? Isn't that enough? You can find the address of the carnival somewhere. That's all right. I know where it is. Been passed it many times. All right, that gives me an hour. Stay where you are and wait for my call. Okay, Brooksy, here we are. That must be Digger's tent right over there. Yes, but it's also dark around here. What do we do now, George? Well, you stay right out here in the car and wait for Johnson. I can't understand why he isn't here. Well, he said he was at home. They'd give him the message and have him come right out. Yeah, well, he'll be along pretty soon, then. Just stay in the car. Well, what are you going to do? Go over to that tent and find diggers. Still got a few minutes before the job's supposed to come off. Hey, diggers. Hey, diggers, you in there? Sleep. I better get inside. Stop. Stop right there. Don't move. Well, what's the idea? Who's that? I said don't move. Voice sounds familiar. Where? Where are you? Who is it? What do you want? Hey, that... Get away from me. Oh, yeah. That's better. Let me go. Let me go. Sure. Sure, I'll let you go in just a few minutes. I'll let you take a little ride with the police, Mrs. Trask. Turn to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. Friends, it was over a year ago that Standard Oil Company of California announced a revolutionary new oil that had been developed by Atomic Energy. That new oil was new RPM motor oil, for which we promised doubles engine life, the time between major overhauls due to lubrication. And since then, actual case histories have confirmed this promise. Time after time, users of new RPM have written in to tell us that everything we said was true. New RPM did double engine life. New RPM cut in half the wear rate of critical engine parts. One cab company, operating in the tough grind that all cabs go through, found new RPM added 100% engine life. No wonder that new RPM motor oil has for years been first choice of Western motorists. So here's what new RPM motor oil can do for your car. If repair bills have been giving you nightmares, change to the oil that doubles engine life. And if you own an automobile for which the manufacturer recommends a heavy-duty type of motor oil, remember this fact. New RPM motor oil exceeds all their requirements. So for top protection under all driving conditions, be sure you're getting new RPM when you buy motor oil. To be sure... Stop in at any independent Chevron gas station or standard station where they say, and mean, we take better care of your car. And now, back 
back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. You find yourself with an apparently normal client who has an equally abnormal talent, the ability to predict murders before they happen. The first two come off according to the precise schedule of her premonitions. The third, about which she has called you, doesn't come off quite the same way because you surprise the lady herself, gun in hand, at the scene of the predicted crime. If your name is George Valentine, you're beginning to wonder why you ever took the case. When from another corner of the carnival tent, you hear... Here, 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 I say, what's coming off here? Is that you, Mr. Diggers? Of course, of course, who are you? Well, maybe we could discuss that better with a little light. You got one someplace? Right. An electric torch. Here. Here we are. Better. There. Now, what's all this fuss out here? I heard a shot and... It... Well, a lady, too. What is all this? Oh, now, now, let's not put on an act. You two know each other, of course. Hey, know this lady? I never laid eyes on her before in all my life. Huh? But I'm sure the lady knows you, don't you, Mrs. Trask? What are you trying to do to me, Mr. Valentine? I don't know this man. Coo, what are you two doing here in the middle of the night anyway? Good question. Mrs. Trask, ladies first. Mr. Valentine, I know what you must be thinking, but it's not true. You think I came here to kill this man myself? Now, what else is there to think? Kill me? I say, lad, what are you talking about? Let's have Mrs. Trask explain that. I can. I can. I know you told me to stay home after I called you on the phone, but I was afraid you wouldn't come. I had to be sure there wasn't another murder. You had a pretty good idea who was going to commit the murder, right? No, of course not. I just realized that if I could stop this one some way, maybe I could get the whole horrible thing out of my mind forever. You've got to believe me, Mr. Valentine. Now, see here. I don't understand all this. I'm a peaceable man. I run a carnival and I run it on it. Now, who'd want to murder me? I don't know yet, Diggers. Maybe nobody. Uh, is this your own gun, Mrs. Trask? Yes, yes, of course it is. Mm, 22, huh? Very pretty. What do you mean by that? Ladies' type gun, you know. Valentine. Valentine, you in there? Oh, yeah, Johnson. Brooksy with you? I'm here, George. Are you all right? Sure. Come on in and join the party. I'll just keep the gun for you, Mrs. Trask. Much safer for everybody. Then. Yeah, well, I got here as fast as I could, Valentine. Got me out of bed. Took a little time. Yeah, yeah. Well, guess I needn't have bothered you, Johnson. Looks like we're not going to have a murder here tonight after all. What? But, George, I, I heard a shot. It came from this way. Oh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Somebody did a little shooting, all right, but it was dark and they missed. Yeah, but, uh, who are these people? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot my manners. Mrs. Trask, Mr. Diggers, Lieutenant Johnson, Miss Brooks. How do you do? You already know Mrs. Trask, Brooks. Yes, you? hello. Now, let's get this straight, Valentine. You rotting me out in the middle of the night because you think somebody's going to be murdered. Oh, this gentleman, as I understand it, Johnson. Yeah? Then who gave you to understand it? Well, now, somebody had a hunch, that's all, and it didn't pay off. Oh, uh, by the way, maybe you can give me a little information. You uh, remember the Arthur Prindle murder? Yeah, 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 sure. Well, what kind of a gun killed Prindle? Caliber, I mean. Uh, it was a uh, thirty-eight. Bullet was still in him. Uh-huh. And uh, the Walter Ransom killing? The same, thirty-eight. Hey, look here, what are you getting at? What's all that got to do with this? Well, might have a lot to do with it. You see, I've been communing with the spirits, Johnson. Some of them know a lot about unsolved murders. What kind of crazy talk is that? Oh, it may sound crazy to you, Lieutenant, but I think if I get better acquainted with those spirits, they may help you pick up your killer. George, yeah, so... you think somebody tried to kill Mr. Diggers and got away? Whoever it was didn't stick around. But won't whoever it was come back after we go? Maybe, but his victim won't be around. Diggers, you're coming home with me tonight for safety's sake. I am? Well, just as you say, lad, but I can't for the life of me figure why anybody would want to kill me. Neither can I, yet. Mrs. Trask? Yes? You drive straight home. Yes, I will. Johnson, I'm uh, sorry to have bothered you. See you tomorrow. Good night. Valentine, come in. Good morning, Johnson. Well, what do you want? Need some information. You need some information. But in order to get it, I'll have to give you some. Not a bad idea if it's any good. Oh, it is, it is. Though I don't know if you'll believe it. Okay, sure. All right, the Mrs. Trask you met out at the carnival last night is my client. She has a little quirk of being able to predict murders. Valentine, don't you think you've been working too hard? <laughs> oh, it's a fact. She knew about the Prindle killing before it happened. Same with the ransom murder. Same with the one that was supposed to come off last night. Mm-hmm. I suppose this Mrs. Trask just goes into a trance, looks in a crystal ball, gets a message. Well, now, Johnson, it isn't quite as fancy as that. She she gets a strong Valentine, feeling. I'm in no mood to talk nonsense. Well, now, you don't have to take my word for it. In both of those murders, she called Hank Ellis on the clarion before they happened, of course. Yeah? 
Say, I remember in that Hans Ransom case, Ellis was on the scene when we got there. All right, then. Now, Prindle and Ransom and the little Englishman diggers are apparently as far apart as the poles. But somewhere there's got to be a common denominator, something they all had in common. That's easy. Your client is a common denominator. Oh, I don't mean that way. She didn't know any of them. Diggers didn't know her. Say, who is this Mrs. Trask, anyway? Her husband's Tommy mean... Trask. What do you mean? Hmm. Club 52? That's right. Well, then there's your common denominator. Yeah? How do you figure? Well, he hasn't always been in the chips, you know. And he made a lot of enemies. Maybe some of them had something on him. He had to get rid of him. Yeah, go on. So his wife heard him planning these things or talked him in his sleep. No, 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 boy. I came up with that little cutie myself, only I didn't play it that seriously. No, our common denominator is the men who were killed. Yeah, they can't help us much. Now, I'd like you to do something for yeah, me. Yeah, what? I want good pictures of both Prendle and Ransom. Get them sent up from the files, and I'll pick them up in a few minutes. Pictures, huh? That's right, good ones. While you're doing that, I'm going to pick up Brooksy. Hey, Mr. Diggers. Hi. Hello, Mr. Valentine. Hello, lady. Hello, Mr. Diggers. I didn't get a chance to thank you for keeping me in your apartment last night, lad. It's a nice place you've got there. Everything going all right today? Smooth as silk. Ma'am, no need to worry about me. No, I just came out to ask you something. Oh, certainly. Uh, come inside my tent. Okay. Yeah. Hey, did you ever know anybody by the name of Walter Ransom? Walter Ransom? Hmm. No, sir, I can't say as I have. Say, he was that bloke as was killed a while back, wasn't he? Yeah, that's right. Now, try this one. Arthur Prindle. Arthur... Yes, sir, I... I knew an Arthur Prindle once, quite a long time ago. Well, then take a look at this picture. This the one you knew? Yes, sir. That's the one. Where did you know him? I'd rather not say, Mr. Valentine. Listen, if you want to save your own life and maybe some others, you'd better tell me. All right, then. It was in San Quentin. This Prindle was in at the same time I was. Uh Uh-huh. Now, you know the man in this picture? Certainly. He was there at the same time, too. His name is Bill Gates. George, Lieutenant Johnson said that's a picture of Walter Ramsey. That's right, Brooksy, but people do change their names sometimes when they get to be successful and want to get rid of the past. Now, I got one more for you to look at, Diggers. Certainly, sir. Here we are. Why, George, that's just an ad. I know, something I picked up. Know this man, Diggers? Yes. Yes, that's the one that escaped. Oh, he was a bad one, he was. I thought I saw him one day on the street, but... Hey... That's the wrong name, it says there. I thought it might be. What's the right name? He's Fred Farmer. Oh, yes, a bad one. He's a killer. I'd recognize him even in that picture. Thanks, Diggers. Maybe you've solved a couple of murders and kept yourself alive at the same time. George, what are you going to do? Call Johnson fast, Brooksy. Have him join us in a little party. Oh, and Diggers, you're invited too. It's Mr. Valentine. Yeah, that's right, Dr. Schroeder. I'm sorry to come right in without being announced. No, that's quite all right, but... No, wait, you seem to be excited about something. Yeah, yeah, I am. I think I've found a way to clear up those premonitions of Mrs. Trask's. Ah, well, that will be a great help. Only I need one more fact before we can wash it up. I'm sure you can give it to me. (laughs) Of course. What is that fact? Why did you kill Prindle and Ransom, Farmer? Uh, Farmer? I don't know what you're talking about. You don't? Then I'll tell you. Both Prendel and Ransom were classmates of yours at San Quentin, weren't they, Farmer? Now, young man, you're being utterly ridiculous. I, I, I can't understand a thing you're saying. It was a great idea, getting Mrs. Trask in a hypnotic state and telling her about the murders in advance. Uh, Mr. Valentine, your imaginations, they, they're fantastic. Mrs. Trask told me about these things. No, I'm afraid you have the wrong man. Yeah? How about those traveling bags? Getting ready to go somewhere? I, uh, I, I have a case out of town. You certainly have. Missed on the diggers' deal, didn't you? Knew you'd have to get out. Now, please, my patience has limits. Sure, so does mine. Okay, farmer, let's not waste any time. Oh, diggers, come on in. What? 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 what, what? Where, where's diggers? Yes, Mr. Valentine, what do you want with me? Where? Recognize this man, Diggers? Recognize him? I most certainly do, if it ain't Fred Farmer. All right, you fools, you bungling amateurs. I suppose you think you can get away with this. Well, a man's got a gun. A thirty-eight, no doubt. And he's already proved it works, too. Yes, and it'll work again. Neither one of you is going to leave this office. I've killed two people for my freedom. I won't stop at two more. Hey, Mr. Valentine, no, he's I don't to... think you would, Farmer. 
Only I forgot to tell you there's another guest at our little party. Okay, Johnson, you heard the confession. Come on in and take him. I won't go. You'll never get me. Oh, yes, we will, Farmer. This place is surrounded. You'd never get away. Now drop the gun. Is everything... Oh, oh, yeah. Everything's under control, Brooksy. But how come you... on, come on. Let's get out and give our client a little peace of mind. Tell you about it on the way. If slapdash grease jobs have left your car squeaking like a crate of baby chicks, call on Car Savers and see what you've been missing. Car Saver Lubrication Service gets rid of squeaks, cuts the wear rate of vital parts. And Car Savers stand behind every grease job with a guarantee against squeaks for a full thousand miles. For quieter, smoother driving and longer car life, get a Car Saver grease job every 1,000 miles at any independent Chevron gas station or standard station where they say and mean we take better care of your car. George, how did you even suspect Dr. Schroeder? Well, it made sense after I got the common denominator. The other three had spotted him, recognized him as farmer, even with the beard and the phony accent, so he had to get rid of him. Well, yes, but Mrs. Trask, you think he actually told her about these people who were going to be killed? Sure, but only when he had her under a hypnotic spell during those treatments of hers. Well, I still don't see why he'd tell her. Well, not so strange. Tommy Trask has a past, too. If his wife began predicting murders, who would they suspect? Tommy Trask. And that would take the suspicion away from Farmer. Right. George. Yeah, Angel? Do you think I could hypnotize you? Well, sure, I suppose so. Why? What would be the point? Well, you might suddenly find yourself one day in a jewelry store buying something for somebody. Hey, that makes me think. What, darling? I gotta get my watch fixed. I better do that right away. Oh, George. <laughs> Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It was written by Lloyd London and directed by Kenneth Webb. Ken Christie was heard as Lieutenant Johnson, Alice Reinhardt as Laura, Harry Bartell as Trask, Larry Dobkin as Klaus, and Parley Bear as Glenn. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter. Your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. Let George Do It is heard overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. <laughs>